Hello everyone. This is Dilip Kumar, Assistant Professor from Department of ECE, working as uh, Assistant Professor in Anumachara College, Tirupati. So here, in the past videos, we have seen the vector calculus in the three different coordinate systems, that is Cartesian, circular cylindrical, and spherical coordinate systems. Then followed by, we have seen the integrations, that is in terms of line, surface, volume integrals in all the three systems. Then followed by del operator. Okay, del operator is a vector differential operator. It is also can be represented in any of the coordinate system that is also seen in the past video under vector calculus. Now, in this video, we can see how the del operator can be used in different ways, either in the form of a gradient or in the form of a divergence or in the curl or in the Laplacian, how the del operator can be used. Generally, to see del operator is to represent in the symbol with the del and that is equal to dou by dou x a x plus dou by dou y a y plus dou by dou z a z. This is of the way to represent the del operator. Now let's move on to the usage of the first one that is a del operator. It can be used in the gradient. So in gradient, it can act as a scalar and it can be written as a del V. Here del is operator, V is a scalar. And the del operator can be used as the divergence. It can be used as divergence. And here it is to represent with the del followed by dot then followed by a vector a bar this is to represent del dot a bar so del dot a bar called as a divergence of a vector a bar then del operator can be used as a curl c u r l curl and it is to represent as del cross a bar del cross a bar represent and the last one, the del operator can be used as a Laplacian. Of course, Laplacian is also a mathematical expression and it can be denoted as del square A, del into del V, sorry, del into del V. So it is del square V. It is a Laplacian of a scalar. These are the four different uses that how the del operator can be used. Now let's look into one by one that is starting from the gradient. First one is gradient of a scalar. Obviously just now we have seen the symbol notation is represent with del V. Actually generally to see the meaning of gradient in the sense, a graded change in the magnitude of some physical quantity or the dimension. Okay, some graded change if thing happens to any quantity, okay, then it leads to be a gradient. In the same manner, if you take any scalar quantity to consider that the scalar quantity is physically some change happen in terms of magnitude if a real time application if you take if you take any plastic material or box like thing structure based on if it is exposed to certain temperature maybe sun or something else with higher temperature the plastic box shape will be changed based on the higher temperatures then the magnitude of the quantity the box is a container let us take a container plastic container the container is physical quantity. It has certain dimensions. After exposing to higher temperatures, then the shape is going to change. 
that shape we can consider it as a magnitude this is what to be considered here as a gradient now if i say in the form of a statement the gradient of a scalar field v is a vector that represents both magnitude and direction of the maximum space rate to increase v if you want to see in terms of uh, graphical manner if i take a three dimensions okay that is uh, x y z to place a quantity physical quantity in this axis that is coordinate system that phys physical quantity that can be exist it is going to be change some great change it's happen okay let this point is a p1 and the volume for this is a v1 and volume for this is a v2 now this v2 will be some change v1 plus additional change can be considered as delta v okay now if there is even some other external additional change is there then that point with respect to this p1 that change we call it as some del v this is what the gradient of a scalar now here this is one point and this point let it be changed to this point p2 now this p1 to p2 there is a change is occurred here the gradient expression to get p1 p2 between these two points we have some change that is a delta v that is to write as dv now let us write the expression dv is equal to do v by do x into dx plus do v by do y into dy plus do v by do z into dz this is the way we can consider here if you take the product for this that is to represent your uh, factors like this do v by do x into ax then do v by do y into ay plus do v by do z into az in this product with the other values which is to be write as dx into ax plus dy into ay plus dz into az here the same way if you take the dot product of these two terms the product of these two terms this one and this one if you take the product once again we are we will be getting this term as it is as the dot product of these two of the vectors x and y and z leads to be one then finally we will be getting like this expression so my ult ultimate goal for us is to get the expression of dv in terms of del operator that is our goal so now we can write this as the gradient this as a gradient this is g here let this has to be term g okay this term is this term is to be g now if you want to write the expression dv equal to g bar that dl bar now this is the change that we observed here length has been observed that is a dl now this is equal to if you take the dot product according to dot product expression which was seen in the previous videos g dot cos theta dl if you want to write in terms of a numerator and denominator dv by dl equal to g cos theta here dl is a differential displacement from point p1 to p2 theta is the angle between g and dl this is how we can represent the gradient so in order to see in the form of an expression to see the gradient is finally to see you can see grade of v okay and that's a gradient of v in a short and the symbol is a del v you can write and this can be considered as a do v by do x into ax plus do v by do y into ay plus do v by do z into az here <coughs> the term the del v is called gradient of v g has its direction maximum rate of change 
maximum rate of change to v the gradient of v can also be expressed not only in cartesian we can also represent in cartesian as well cylindrical as well spherical let's look into those expressions obviously this is the expression that belongs to cartesian okay now let's look into this the same expression uh, that is a gradient in terms of circular cylindrical that is rho phi z rho v do v by do rho into a rho plus 1 by rho do v by do phi into a phi plus do v by do z into a z and in terms of spherical coordinates do del v equal to do v by do r into a r plus 1 by r into do v by do theta into a theta that is spherical coordinates in terms of r theta phi then plus 1 by r sin theta do v by do phi into a phi we can have the relations also with respect to uh, del operator you can have some properties you can able to write that is to write here let's look into that also okay that is del into v plus u equal to del v plus del u del of v u equal to del v del u plus u del v in this way also we can write here v and u are a scalars that is to write and if you want to see the fundamental properties of the gradient to see the magnitude of del v equals the maximum rate of change in v per unit distance del v points in the direction of maximum rate of change in v del v at any point is perpendicular to the constant v surface that passes through that particular point and vector to represent i mean uh, here uh, the projection of del v is can be represent in any unit vector direction also it has to represent then it is to be represent as a del v dot a in its way you can write so this is called a directional derivative this term we can call it as a directional derivative here uh, this is also the rate of change of v in this particular direction of a that is to represent then this is about the gradient the next usage of del operator is in the form of divergence let's look into the divergence second one divergence of a vector is to represent as del dot a bar okay so let's look into the statement now the net outflow of the flux of a vector field a bar from a closed surface yes is obtained from the integral of a bar dot ds this is the outflow okay now the divergence of a bar as the net outward flow of a flux per unit volume over a closed incremental surface now whatever the statement i have said we can see in terms of expression let's look into that so if you want to listen once again you can play back for, for reverse and then listen and then look into this expression now later here if you see the expression related to the statement the net uh, generally to represent here in terms of uh, words divergence div dot a bar or even in terms of a symbol representation del dot a bar that is equal to here the net outflow of a vector field a bar okay of a closed surface so as it is a closed surface we can write as a symbol integral closed surface integral 
and the differentiation term will be ds bar as it is a vector representation with the value of a bar it is also represented is obtained from the integral here the divergence is obtained as the net outflow okay whatever the closed volume or closed surface of this whatever is coming outside of this surface closed surface is per unit volume of a unit volume of a closed incremental surface unit volume is del v here here del v is volume enclosed by the closed surface yes in which some point p is located generally if you take a uh, general meaning to say divergence in the sense distributing of some quantity in different directions distribution of the quantity in different directions or even you can say you can take any box like structure so uh, i hope you all can able to see the structure here here this is the structure of the box block at the center there is a point p is located similar to this expression you can see this is a closed surface in the center of this block we have a point p maybe a dust particle or some particle is there the particle p can distribute diverge in any of the direction in the left side right side or the top bottom side any of the direction it can move based on the closed action necessary action is taken on the particle here this is what the divergence of a vector to see here in divergence it can be classified into three types one is positive divergence next second you can have the other type negative divergence and the third type is zero divergence now see if you see then first one positive divergence the point p is let it be exist if it is moving outwards outwards direction then it is a positive divergence then the negative divergence if the point p is exist here is coming inwards to this point inwards to this point this is what called negative divergence suppose a different particles that exist all the particles that moving towards this point p then it is a negative divergence if all the particles moving away from this point p it is a positive divergence now let it be other one that is a zero divergence zero divergence if you see zero divergence if you see here looks to be like this where you have equal in and equal out will be there point p is exist this is what equal in and equal out with respect to point p this is called zero divergence hope all of them got this point there is a theorem also is there with respect to divergence theorem and uh, with respect to that is a divergence of a vector which we uh, call it as a divergence theorem or uh, there is other name also is there gauss ostrogatsky theorem okay so before that uh, we can have the properties also is there with respect to divergence it can also uh, have the divergence of a scalar v doesn't make any sense it is also one of the uh, point to understand and in terms of other expressions to see del dot if you see in terms of expressions uh, del dot a bar dot sorry del dot a bar plus b bar to be right as del dot a bar plus del dot b bar to see then other one a del dot v a bar to be written as v del dot a bar plus a bar dot del v here v is a scalar and a bar and b bar are vector quantities now the next we can see about the divergence theorem as we have seen just now the definition uh, that is the divergence of a vector is nothing but 
divergence of a vector at a given point is given point is p is the outward flow per unit volume as the volume shrinks about p that volume shrinks is nothing but if you see this term can be written with respect to shrinks is uh, can be happen with the limit delta v tends to zero okay it's when it's, it's shrinking shrinking leads to volume to be zero whatever the quantity that is with respect to point is coming outward okay when there is a full of uh, water okay uh, if we a container if we trying to press that container that water is trying to move with respect to reference point p away from any point any position of the container that closed container it can be blast some portion particles will be break out then it will be coming out of that water then this is called closed container a bar dot ds bar delta v this is what we can see now this term i mean uh, this divergence let's look into in terms of divergence theorem how it is to be proved the statement of expression is let's look into the statement the divergence theorem states that the total outward flux of a vector field a bar through the closed surface through the closed surface is this one closed integral vector outward flux ds that is equal to volume integral of divergence of a bar volume integral v del dot a bar dv easily we can remember this divergence state divergence theorem statement very easily very easily this is a very very important in almost all the exams which is regularly asked even in the gate or even most of the competitive exams here closed surface is equal to volume it's default if you join two points it can be leads to a line if you join such lines you can have a surface if you join such surfaces you can have a closed volume sorry closed surface is it right such sides such sides or such surfaces if you have joined to form a volume and a closed surface now that is why this closed surface is equal to volume your surface is has been changed to volume dv ds is changed to dv and the vector is changing to del operator del dot a bar now this is what the statement or the expression okay of uh, divergence theorem divergence theorem here the proof goes like this if you subdivide the value of v into large number of small cells let us take this cell itself this is a huge cell it can be divided into a small portions if you see this is a one of the portion such portions you can get it you can divide this entire block or this container into small number of pieces right in that that can be written as an entire surface okay you can have like this as if you divide the entire volume into small number of pieces those can be in the form of a discrete right now that discrete has sum of cells k cells okay has a number of n number of cells let it be in that k th cell i am denoting like this that k th cell is s suffix k such k cells has been integrated now these two integrations are same now this is equal to summation of k and here if you if i divide and multiply with the value of delta vk i can get it like this then this term will be the same there is no change in it here sk will be there then followed with this the outward flow of one cell if you take the one cell let me take other color to have greater understand let so this is a one cell okay this is a one cell that you can see this one cell is inward to some other neighboring cell and there is a cancellation on every interior surface so hence 
sum of surface integrals over different cells is the same as the surface integral over the surface s yes. is what coming out from if you take neighboring cells are suppose this is a cell 1 and cell 2 for the cell 2 cell 1 and the cell 3 are the neighboring cells one can be in one can be out one can be in one can be out like so their summation integration will cancel each other with respect to neighboring cells then we can have the overall expression taking the limit on the right hand side of the equation taking the limit of this right hand side of expression we can get directly that closed surface integral a bar ds so we can write like this expression left hand side and right hand side if you take the limit then we can have volume integral del dot a bar dv this is what you can say here the theorem applies to here any volume v bounded by the closed surface yes okay this is what divergence theorem next we can see the curl of a vector third one curl of a vector here curl of a vector is nothing but to say is an axial that is called a rotational vector whose magnitude is maximum circulation of a bar per unit area and it tends to zero and whose direction is normal to the area where the area is oriented so as to make the circulation maximum let us to have say like if you take example like uh, like a, a full bucket of water if you put your hand into that bucket and start rotating either clockwise or anti-clockwise there will be a maximum circulation with the whatever the speed if you are rotating then it starts having some circulation which will be occurred at the center which forms a circle axial some rotation can be happen when we have the maximum rotation takes place which results in the normal direction can be occurred at the center while rotating with full bucket of water with our hands this is the example to say here the circulation of a vector field a bar across i mean sorry around a closed path l as the line integral that is to give here the expression will be like this representation looks to be like this curl a bar del cross a bar limit delta is to surface tends to zero for the divergence volume tends to zero here surface tends to zero as i said an example that uh, bucket full bucket of water initially the we have a full surface of water once we start initially we have full bucket of water top surface is a plain surface with this full bucket of water once we started rotating in a clockwise or anti-clockwise direction whatever the surface initially it tends to be zero it started tends to be from maximum surface layer area it tends to zero as it is rotating some circle has been formed which makes the maximum rotation gives the maximum uh, rotation gives the perpendicular direction which is moving is the center of the bucket this is what happened in while rotating a full bucket of water with our hands here to see a limit delta s tends to zero so here as it is a surface closed line integral a bar dl 
divided by delta s into a n maximum. A n maximum is nothing but maximum direction that occur perpendicular to this. This is what happens. An example also you can say that full bucket of water. Similar to the divergence theorem, we have curl with respect to curl also there is a theorem. There's a name other called Stokes theorem. And before that we have also there is a, some properties that is also there with respect to curl. That is also you can see the properties of the curl to see uh, curl of a vector field is another vector field. Curl of a scalar field doesn't make any sense. Okay, you can have some expressions del cross to see. Let's see that expressions del cross a bar plus b bar. You can write del cross a bar plus del cross b bar. You can have the expression with respect to uh, to say scalar quantity v a bar to write here v del cross a bar plus del v cross a bar this one and the divergence of a curl okay the divergence of a curl this is a very important uh, property that is followed in curl divergence of a curl okay divergence of a curl divergence is represented with del dot followed by curl curl means curl of a vector okay uh, let me read the statement first divergence of the curl of a vector field vanishes so vanishes in the sense which is equal to zero so that vanishing is happened with respect to a vector field a bar divergence of curl of a vector field is zero okay the curl of gradient of a scalar field also vanishes to be zero so curl in the sense curl of del cross del v curl of gradient gradient is del v is also vanishes it is also zero and to see in the form of a graphical representation so center p okay so whatever the field that has been in a circular motion it is to be happen here okay this is what curl at point p points out of the page okay depends on the direction it is out of the page if it is in anti clockwise direction it is in, into the page and here if you see other figure exactly opposite to that uh, curl here the point p is uh, not in a circular i mean with respect to reference point p the direction of this vector or the fields is not in a curl motion here the curl is to be zero here here the curl is not equal to zero. This is what we can say with respect to curl. Then the same curl also, I mean, uh, similar to the divergence theorem, we can have the uh, Stokes theorem that is also have. The Stokes theorem, here the statement to say, the circulation of the vector field A bar around a closed path L is equal to the surface. Let me write the expression similar to the statement. Closed path L vector field a bar as it is a line dl okay this is to be right with respect to the surface integral of a curl curl is del cross a bar a surface in the surface uh, differentiation ds bounded by l here del cross a bar are continuous on s similar expression I mean, similar kind of uh, theorem proof we can apply as it is a line, we can have the entire surface. The entire surface has been divided into small number of elements. Such elements you can have as a K, n number of elements. Among n number of elements, you can take only one element that is a kth element that is to represent here. Then it is to be right here like this. That Among that, we can have all elements has been summed up to give total surface. Then it is to be written with respect to sigma k, divide and multiply with surface delta k, change in surface. That is to be written here like this, a bar dl bar. Okay. Then here to see the same thing, if you have, there is a cancellation here to say. As I said here, there is internal rotation, internal rotation, internal rotation, internal rotation from one to one 
among the others. So between here, between here we have, there is a cancellation of every interior path. So the sum of integrals around the different cells is same as the line integral around bounding the curve L. Then finally, it results, the statement will be closed line integral A bar DL bar is equal to surface integral del cross a bar ds this is what here the direction of dl and ds must be chosen using the right handed screw rule okay this is what this says here the divergence theorem relates to the surface integral and the line sorry the divergence theorem relates to surface integral and volume integral here in stokes theorem it relates to line integral and surface integral easily we can remember these two theorems these two theorems are very important in most of the competitive exams or even general regular exams of the graduation programs the last type usage we can see the fourth one that is Laplacian of a scalar here to see. Here the Laplacian is uh, we can have uh, it is expedient to introduce a single operator which is the composite of a gradient and divergence operators. This operator we call it as a Laplacian. Here uh, it is denoted with the uh, expression like this del square v. This expression can be written with Laplacian v is equal to del dot del v. This is to write as uh, take the product del square v. Okay, this we can have the expression in terms of uh, partial derivatives del square v equal to dou square v by dou x square plus dou square v by dou y square plus dou square v by dou z square. The same, the Laplacian also can be written either in circular cylindrical or even in spherical coordinates also we can write. The scalar field is said to be harmonic in a given region. If its Laplacian vanishes, then the expression to be takes like this, del square v equal to zero. Scalar field is harmonic, then the Laplacian will be obviously to be zero. And we can have the vector fields can also be classified into different types with respect to different considerations of the divergence and the curl. So let me write the expressions here so that we can have the comparison of both with respect to curl and divergence. So first expression to see del dot a bar equal to zero dot of I mean del operator dot product with a vector field is divergence del operator cross product with a vector field is curl here both the fields are results to be zero if both the fields are results to be zero then it is no divergence and no curl example of graphical representation to see of course, this figure we have seen already in the past slides or the past board scenes. This is a point P reference. This is called zero divergence. Or here there is no rotation. By default, we can get it as no curl. The other expression, del dot A bar is not equal to zero, which is nothing but there is a divergence exist. There is a divergence exist in the sense Opposite, let us take other consideration, del cross A bar equal to zero, curl is zero. So curl is zero in the sense with respect to point P, we can have the divergence of the fields in different ways, but there is no rotation. The other one, other combination, del dot A bar equal to zero, del cross A bar is not equal to zero. Here in this one, divergence is zero but curl exists curl exists in the sense there is a rotation there is a rotation exists here 
but there is no divergence with respect to point. This is the other last combination which we can see del dot a bar is not equal to zero del cross a bar is not equal to zero that is both divergence as well curl exist here both divergence and curl exist looks to be uh, like this the diagram looks to be divergence is happening and even the rotation is also happening here we can have the name a vector field a bar which we can call it as uh, this is a vector field a bar if its divergence del dot a bar is zero then this type of field we can call it as we can call it this type of fields we can call it as solenoidal fields s o l e n o i d n o i d a l solenoidal fields such field has neither source nor synced flux that is to write the expression closed surface integral a bar ds is equal to volume integral del dot a bar dv is equal to this is equal to zero this is called solenoidal field examples to see solenoidal fields incompressible fluids magnetic fields current density under steady state conditions these are some solenoidal fields if you see the field of curl f bar in a purely solenoidal this also we can have with some uh, del dot del cross some uh, field is also equal to zero this also we can see and along with this we can have the other name of the field which is called irrotational field rotational field is curl irrotational field is the where your curl is zero that is del cross a bar equal to zero which is called irrotational irrotational that is surface integral del cross a bar ds equal to closed line integral a bar dl equal to zero this is called irrotational examples to see rotational electrostatic field gravitation fields all the irrotational fields so these are the uses that is used mean uh, with respect to del operator the first one we have seen in this video is that divergence i'm sorry gradient divergence curl and laplacians first one gradient change in uh, graded change there is a change in physical quantity is called gradient always it is represented with respect to magnitude change which is a scalar quantity the next we have seen with respect to all the gradient with respect to three different coordinate systems then followed by the divergence only diverging chain different directions of the field is moving in different directions it is called divergence based on the type of direction either moving inwards or moving outwards we have positive negative and equal in equal out we have zero divergence then followed by the theorem which is called divergence theorem then we have seen the curl of a vector third usage of divergence the third usage of del operator here we can have circular rotation maximum with respect to normal vector then followed by we have a theorem which is a with related to curl that is stokes theorem also we have seen then we have seen the last one usage of del operator laplacian of a scalar then classification of the fields how we can able to classify different types of field if the divergence is zero that type of field we can call it as solenoidal field if curl is zero then we can call the type of field as irrotational field thank you